Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. WTF is a salt android cactus. Well, I assumed that they had just missed a few words out of the title. I thought this was actually a game about fighting endless waves of androids while wielding nothing but a cactus. It turns out that it's disappointingly not that, so I should immediately mark the game down. It is a twin-stick arena shooter by Witchbeam, as you can see down at the bottom there, if you're reading. It's a preview build, 130607, whatever that means. It means it ain't done yet, is what it means. So everything that you see here is not necessarily representative of the final product. This game is not finished. However, it is on green light, and the link is in the description below this video if you find that this particular video takes your fancy. So, shall we play? Sounds like a pretty good idea. We'll try out the options menu first. There's a few things that definitely need to be changed here, I feel. It is a Unity game, so as you can see, the options are fairly limited. They have a tendency to be, although... Nicely enough, it's actually in the game itself instead of in an external launcher, which is often the case in Unity games. V-Sync on and off is available. This game runs at a ridiculous frame rate, so it's just something to bear in mind. It's not exactly a taxing game. Most Unity games aren't. Audio settings, individual volume sliders, always nice to see. And game settings, you can use either the 360 pad or... I think you can pretty much use any pad, but it does have the X input interface DLL file to allow you to default use that. And keyboard and mouse. For what I can tell, it currently doesn't have rebinding functionality. It would be nice to see that. There's not a lot of buttons in this game. There's like five and then your two mouse buttons. But being able to rebind that, particularly for left-handed gamers, I think would be a very good thing indeed. Would be nice to see that. Okay, so. There is a collections option. This is not in the game yet. EX settings. I assume these are extra settings that you can apply once you've like beaten the game or something to give you a bit of replayability. Art gallery and codex available for the lore that this game has, which is fairly limited, and it will have online leaderboards. It does also have co-op. Unfortunately, that is very much local only. So, let's shoot some stuff. So, currently I have access to five androids. The final game will have eight of them. They all have different weapons, so they very much play differently. Cactus has an assault rifle and a flamethrower. All of these are upgradable. Seeker missiles, cannonball for Holly, as well as spread shot rocket for Lemon. Lemon? Why on earth would you call a robot Lemon? I don't think I could ever possibly trust that. You would never call a piece of technology a Lemon and trust it to defend or wield a firearm. And then you've got Coral, Shotgun, and Plasma Field, and then Starch with Laser and Micro Missile. So we will go with Cactus for the time being, since it is the title of the game. And I'll show you exactly what's going on with it. So I've beaten a few of these levels. I'm going to... I'll try the boss again. Just to show you how it goes. But I'd also like to, of course, show you some of the later levels. All of these are currently locked. This is very much a preview build. Tutorial, definitely not necessary. It's a very, very simple game indeed. The mechanics are easy to understand. So we'll start with Hive, since I haven't played that yet. Alright, this is all about shooting stuff. Yeah, all about the shooting. It's a lot of arena shooting, there are a lot of enemies, a lot of bullets whizzing around all over the place. There are a couple of unique mechanics that make this game a little bit interesting. So, at this, to start with, you'll notice that at the top, you've actually got a power bar. This power bar will decrease as you move around and shoot. You will have to collect batteries to enable you to recharge it. If you don't do that, well, that's GG. You can die as many times as you want. And you'll have to bash the buttons to get back up, but it will drain your power and it will lose you time. Also means, of course, that your overall score at the end is not going to be as good. So, just something to bear in mind. Fairly important feature to consider. Now, you can also collect these little energy orbs, which will increase the power of your weapon as you go along. I believe there's about four upgrade stages for your weapon. Once you get to maximum level, the gun just fires at a ludicrous rate. It's really quite ridiculous and fantastic. As you can tell, the game is very stylized. It actually has some bullet heli elements in it, mostly because there are just so many bullets flying around the place. And when you see the boss and some of the fire patterns there, you'll most likely understand exactly what I'm referring to there. I don't use the term bullet hell lightly. There are a lot of games that shoot a lot of bullets at you and are not bullet hell-esque, but it definitely has some influence from it. And even the art style and the fact that you've got this kind of all-female android cast, it's very much a sort of Japanese bullet hell thing. Oh, man, this is about to get really, really messy really, really quickly, isn't it? There we go. Big chains, lots and lots of enemies. Now, this level isn't all that interesting because it doesn't feature one of the things, one of the kind of flagship features that this game's got going on, and that is the notion of dynamic levels. 
which change as you fight on them. Now, fighting in the same arena over and over again is not really that interesting. I think most people would probably believe me on that one. However, there are levels in this game where stuff actively moves around. The level actually rearranges itself as you fight in it. It's initially very disorientating, but it rapidly becomes obvious that this is a really cool feature that actually adds an awful lot to the game. I mean, the game, aside from that, is pretty much about as generic an arena shooter as you can really get. It is a well-polished one, however. The weapons are satisfying to use. I'd say this is probably the least satisfying weapon. I definitely like the spread shot. I'm a big fan of the homing missiles and things like that. The secondaries are pretty cool, too. You can basically use them until they overheat, and then they have to cool down, and then you can use them again. If I was to say anything about the power-ups, it's the fact that there just aren't, aren't all that many of them. Yeah? There's the, the acceleration power-up is a lot of fun to use. In fact, all the power-ups are. There's a firepower one, there's a lockdown which freezes enemies in place, and then there is the speed upgrade, which I'm currently using right now. That even gives you a little like a set of wings behind you. Again, a kind of anime influence going on there. Hello! There we go. I don't think this was actually the right character for this particular level. It's a spread shot or the cannonball would have been way more useful. And that's what I was talking about earlier, the idea that you can't die per se, it will just drain your battery and you'll lose time in your chain and ranking and so on and so forth. The overall gameplay is very enjoyable, but I think it would definitely benefit... Uh, I actually lose. Oh, there we go. I think it would definitely benefit from trying to get a few more power-ups into it, if I'm totally honest. Actually, let, let me pick an, another Android, something a little bit different. And go, uh, oh, might work. There we go. We'll go with the rockets and the spread shot. Okay, so this is the one level, I think, in the preview build that actually shows you that dynamic level changing that I was talking about there. So stuff is going to change in the level. Cover is going to move. The area that enemies spawn are going to move. There are even going to be like kind of islands in the middle of the level with specifically tricky enemies to kill. And you'll rapidly realize this is actually a really nice feature overall. And it does at least deep... It, it differentiates the game from what would otherwise be a fairly generic sort of arena shooter. And don't get me wrong, it, it's, it's a good arena shooter. As in, the weapons are enjoyable to use, what power-ups there are are fun to use, but I definitely wish there were more power-ups and more options available. I know the end game will actually have eight androids available, which does give you that variety, but with only three power-ups to pick up, as well as the generic sort of firepower upgrades available, that's it's not quite as good as it could be. I don't really see the harm in adding significantly more power-ups and options to the game. And th this is a very nice framework upon which you can build, and you can create something that's got an awful lot more variety to it. It's a solid start, a very solid start indeed. I'd also like to point out the music. Music's pretty good. There's a lot of nice chip tunes and chip themed stuff going on in the background so i'll give you about a minute of that while i concentrate on killing all this stuff There you go. So what you might have noticed actually is that as the power goes down, you actually lose some overall volume and dynamic range to the music, which is a nice little feature. It indicates that you are about to be in some serious goddamn trouble. This is one of the harder levels, as you can tell. I, I think what they've done is they've given a kind of cross-section of what you can expect from the game. And as a direct result, the skip to these levels suddenly massively jacks up the difficulty. A lot of bullets flying around the place, a lot of enemies to deal with, and so on and so forth. It's cool, though. It is it is a lot of fun, for what it is. I, I would like to see online co-op. That would be very nice indeed. I would like to see more power-ups. 
I would just like to see generally more stuff shoved into the game to actually give it a little bit more variety. The dynamic levels help a lot in that respect, but I don't know if they'll necessarily be enough. It's a solid start, though. Obviously, the price point is really going to be a factor as to whether or not people are really interested in playing this game. But the art style is nice. The overall gunplay is satisfying. And I really like the dynamically changing level. So before I go, I would like to show you the boss. This is actually something that I like a lot because they deliberately kind of engage you with the boss instead of just throwing the boss at you and saying, her. It's actually got some story behind it. It's got a lot of voice acting. As you go through the various stages of the boss, the boss will taunt you and become progressively more desperate. And the boss is reasonably tricky. So I think I actually... Hang on. I'm going to change... I'm going to select a... No, it won't let me... There we go. I want to select a different Android for this. I don't want to use Spreadshot for this. This doesn't really make a huge amount of sense. There we go. I'll use Starch. Laser and Micro Missile. Sounds like a good idea. My previous ranking on this level is D because I died a huge amount to one of the particular boss phases. Nicely stylized intro screens. Always nice to do that. I mean, the game's nice and colorful. It's obviously not the best looking game ever, but the art style does it favors. All right. Unleash the micro missiles because there is no situation where having a micro missile launcher is not a good thing. First stage is relatively easy, just a case of kind of strafing around and also trying to grab energy upgrades for your weapon when you can. All right. Annoyingly enough, it also spawns the battery directly from the enemy. So you've got to be just a, a little bit careful. There we go. Thankfully, these things do home in. Looks like this was actually a reasonably good choice of Android. Better than my last choice, anyway. This this is going... This is about to get really unpleasant, isn't it? Yeah, probably. Oh, all right. There we go. Homing missiles. Okay, that's fine. I can deal with this. It's about stage three or four that things start to get really, really crazy. There we go. I'll have all of that. A little bit extra damage. Always good. All right. Don't really want to get into a corner here. Oh, good lord. Yeah, this, this is where it gets a little bit nuts. I haven't exactly figured out how to dodge that. It may be that I can kind of stay in the center and get... Ah, oh yeah, if you get really, really close to him and you're careful to avoid those stomps, then you can make it work. Okay, so that's how you do it. Nice. All right, good. I should have figured that one out the last time. It was pretty dumb that I didn't. All right, spinning bullet hell nonsense. These are relatively simple to avoid. So, you know, it's not like it's an extremely difficult bullet hell game, but the boss is relatively challenging to the point where I keep... Why do I keep eating those? What am I doing? Good lord. Just be less terrible. I mean, that's the only thing you really need to do here. Not exactly a difficult concept, is it? There we go. Grab a power-up. Oh, accelerate. Well, that's going to make things a hell of a lot easier. There we go. There we go. <laughs> But yeah, it's a nice boss design overall, actually. Really really nice boss design. Hopefully, there'll be a lot of good bosses in the game. So, yeah, it looks promising. It really does. If this is the kind of thing that you're into, if you're just looking for a game which involves shooting an awful lot of stuff in a fairly enjoyable twin-stick fashion, then it works. And it works really well on PC with keyboard and mouse as well, which is always nice. And my ranking still sucks. But hey, never said I was any good at these games, only that they were a decent amount of fun. So it's looking promising. If you like the look of this game, you can go and kickstart it. No, in fact, no, you can't. You can go and greenlight it. The game has already been kickstarted. In fact, no, it hasn't. They just made it. What am I talking about? God, I'm terrible at this. I don't even know why this is my job. Anyway, go and green light it if you wish. Link is in the description below this video. It's a pretty good time. Assault Android Cactus, ladies and gentlemen. Possibly the silliest name game you'll get this year. My name has been Total Liskit. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.